Hey everyone, welcome back to the Sorcerer playthrough for Elden Ring of Elden Ring. We are back at the base of Rhea Lucaria because it is time to collect a spell. A fairly important spell. Uh, this is something... Well, I knew about the spell, but I didn't sort of realize it was here. I some For some reason, I thought it was in one of the cave areas, but it's not. So... That's what we're gonna start with. I'm gonna spoil it because it's not much of like a cliffhanger or anything. The spell we are going to be picking up is called Terra Magica or Magicus or I don't even know, something like that. What this does is it creates like a little aura or like a little glyph in the ground and it boosts your magic. If you're standing in that glyph, your, your magic is boosted by I think like 35%, which is fairly insane. Terra Magica is basically the avenue we'll take to break the game with magic. Oh yeah, and I have enough golden seeds to get a charge. I've done a couple of things since the last episode. Mainly I've been exploring the caves and getting like upgrade materials and all that because we will sure as hell need upgrade materials coming soon, especially when you consider that we will be upgrading our staff soon as well. I think this is something I did the last time, but we are now at 40 int. We're going to start to sort of descend into the point of the game where sort of the meat here staff isn't gonna cut it I mean it's good it works oh, these fuckers are gonna get it mm. I should have I should have had carry and great sword whatever whoa okay oh yeah I forget that these guys are insane with their magic insane oh yeah, I got the robe is that worth it? not really man this carry and slicer is ridiculous and somebody said that it works like out of it does it works like out of all the like special move attacks you know like the back steps and all that and that's pretty cool. It actually functions like a regular weapon. As I mentioned, I think this was during the stream, which <clears throat> I'm streaming Bloodborne. Come join. On Wednesdays and Fridays, by the way, if you're wondering. Hold on. I'm trying not to get lost here. There we go. And I mentioned it back there as well that... I feel like with this game they really perfected the art of having good spell swords or spell weapons which they didn't really have before. Oh, it's one of these guys. This is like a battle major whatever his name is. I mean, he's above dude. That's what I want. And I think that spell does exist in this game. Okay. Actually not as easy as I thought it would be. Um, yeah, I think the hammer does exist. Where the... Oh. Sneaky AF. The lock-on keeps breaking too. Man, these guys are on some cheating shit. They have their FP pumped up. That's how you... I think that's how you get... Not FP, but... What's the stat called? Mind pumped up. I think that's how you get faster casting speed. Or is it with dexterity? I don't remember. So yeah, these are the bosses, uh, two of these things. 
Uh, you know, you know the deal with these guys. They're very annoying. But what you have to do is just break their crystal thingy. Shield. I mean, these guys are basically ruined sentinels, if you don't know. Just far more annoying. You know what? I might just say fuck it, because... I somehow... am, like, not looking forward to dealing with this enemy. So I'm gonna summon the squad. The boys. Maybe... See, when you think about it, yeah, the meteorite should fuck these guys up. I think they have, like, a little crystal shield. Yeah. It kind of makes sense. Alright. Crimson it up. You can just stay still. I swear to you, if I was using that spell, that wouldn't do nearly as much damage. Okay, is the squad taking damage? I think they are. Oh, come on, just... There we go. We're one boy left. This thing is screwed. I mean, again, I am very powerful for this. Like, way, way too powerful. Hey, crystal release. It kind of sounds dirty. Release the crystal. <laughs> Look at him. Sorry, you're you're staying down. In the cave. Yeah, so that was the, the cave you need to do. And by the way, this is, I think, the alternate way into Rhea Lucaria. In case I haven't mentioned this. This is... You're going up the... Sears Tower elevator here. Leading to the very tip it up of Rhea Lucaria. I don't actually I don't think you can get into the academy from here. But it's cool, wow the skybox is super cool here. GG's on the skybox from the earth tree in the background and all that. And here we have Terra Magica. As I mentioned, this thing is pretty good. And pretty good is an understatement. Um, a very heavy understatement. This thing, but one like I forgot to mention though, is almost exclusively good for boss fights, uh, especially when we will have uh, Comet Zor. That's the that's the kind of game breaking shit. Anyways, I'm gonna try and. Look at crystal released. Oh! 41. Okay. And somebody mentioned that this is as n not as useless as I thought it would be. Crystal release. Uh, somebody mentioned it, that it has some use. Which I can imagine maybe in like a larger boss. You can get close to him and screw him up. Okay, we are nowhere near close, but this is the thing, where is it? Terra Magica, low int requirement as well. So what happens is... This is the sigil. And again, within this, you deal, I think it's 35%. 35% extra. Um, just insane when you think about it. A little bit insane, but very, very useful. Again, this thing with the Kamehameha combined with, I think there is a, um, a mixed physic that allows you to use no FP when uh, casting spells, which we all need to get. Those three combined, just boss melter um, with high intelligence, of course, and a good staff. 
<clears throat> it just goes nutty, the damage. Oh yeah, and I completely forgot that I died like halfway up the mountain on Galmir, so let me just get back there because I don't want to waste your guys' time. You've already seen this. Okay, I think this is where I was coming up this ladder, or was it that ladder? I don't remember, but they all lead to the same place, so it's not too big of a problem. Yeah, let's buy something. I'm gonna be nice. Uh, Guilty Hood. Oh yeah, this is a good set too, isn't it? This kind of looks sick. I'll buy a couple of these. Part of me does wonder. Uh, I wish it didn't have that like long... Oh yeah. <laughs> nice. It didn't, I wish it didn't have that like long front cape or whatever it is. Ah, yeah, the color there is off. Some of these are creepy. I mean, I think we're gonna stick to what we have. It's currently the best option. I've gotten used to the blues kind of not matching. And I'm like, okay with that now. So yeah, anyways, the plan is, as I mentioned, is to do Gelmir. Rykard, you know, Rykard does give a lot of runes. He's not that difficult. Just sort of pump our stuff up. Uh, we have the... What's it called? Godskin Noble. I wanted to say Ghost Skin Noble, which is not that far off, to be honest, but... You know. And then we'll return to the capital. Not to make the capital insanely annoying for ourselves. Okay. These guys are in their madness. You do gotta be careful. Why are you... Ugh, fuck! He's strong. And did I not hit... Oh no, I didn't hit anything, did I? As in like a stake of America. I'm gonna be going all the way back. It's just these two snake eater ladders that are annoying. Oh fuck. Didn't I hit a stake of America on the way? Oh well, you know, you know what the deal is. Okay, we're gonna change up our tactics here a little bit. Um, one thing for sure is, I swear there's a side of grace there somewhere. I remember hitting a side of grace on my last playthrough. Because, you know, especially in the open world, they do... Uh, like, behave generously with the sides of grace. But what I'm gonna do is we'll just... Sort of ignore these guys for a little bit, because... I honestly do not want to... I do not want to do this again, but we can come back here later. Cool. Much better. And of course the big thing here is the full grown falling star beast who is fairly strong and I don't know if I want to fuck with him I on paper I could beat him I think I don't see why I wouldn't be able to with magic we'll, we'll just try it we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens that's the best option right just check it out the other thing that would be really nice to get is the, the map for this area. Which I think is past... Yeah, it's past the Falling Star Beast. Because if I remember correctly... 
And if I say, if I remember correctly, the answer to that is probably no. No, I definitely don't. This isn't the place to uh, reach Azur. Volcano? Oh, there's a cave here. All right, then never mind. This is probably worth doing later on, uh, but not now. I want to be sort of laser focused on making progress. So let's just do, let's just try the falling star beast. I mean, do we have anything to lose? Well, 16K. I, I do like this. I'm going to be honest with you. That is pretty sick. Aha, uh -huh, okay. I mean... It's doable. If you think about it... Yeah, it 100% it is. What I just need is more... Cerulean flasks and to not take damage. I was under the impression that that was going to be the issue. Uh, the magic I take. I mean the damage I take, not the magic I take. It's sort of the same thing. I mean, yeah, th this is definitely possible. Uh, but I was just thinking, because I visited Garang, I don't know why, off screen. Even the Black Blade Kindred would be possible if you don't take damage. And when you think about it, that's really sort of the crux of this game. Uh, like, if you don't take damage, everything is possible. I'm not really, like, speaking some great wisdom here by saying that. Um, don't estimate my shit. There it is. So this is the... This is the risky part that is difficult to see. Cool. Just be careful. And if I can hit one of his weak spots, which is not easy, that would be even better. Are you ki- Did that just both miss? Oh, fuck. Hmm. I mean... A lot of this does work with the horse. I was just talking about... Again, on stream. And I'm sorry to reference the stream always to people who, are, who can't join. Is that one of the things I realized on this second playthrough here is that horse combat is pointless I think in this game as in it works it's possible to do but there's very little point to it because you are sort of crippling yourself because the horse doesn't just like it has its limitations you know like when you get knocked off and all the other sort of shit that can only happen if you're riding the horse a lot of the times I think you're better off just getting off your high horse and just doing the combat on foot. There are, of course, exceptions to this, like specific horse bosses and all that. Like the flame giant or fire giant or whatever it's called. But I don't know, man. This one, it feels like you kind of do want the horse to avoid his sort of gravity attacks, but then again, uh, just makes all the other stuff so much more difficult. Anyways, I'm coming down here because this is where the map is, plus a side of grace, plus a boss that's way easier.
See, this is what I'm talking about. That thing has a lot of HP. Although I think they do have resistance to magic. They're just kind of like that. Cool. All right. So we have the volcano cave. And of course the entrance to the manor and shortcut back here. Well, not even a shortcut, but just the way back here. And I remember I like couldn't figure out how to get into the volcano manor for a long time. I got stuck because uh, you need to do go through like a secret passage and shit like that. And I was just like riding my horse around like you go down this way and like this is where Azur is. As in Comet Azur and his corpse. And I was just like baffled. Anyways, there's a fucking ulcerated tree spirit here. Which is actually a little bit better of a place to fight such a boss. Rather than inside a dungeon. As we've done before. Unless, okay. See? You have all the space to work with. And here a horse might actually be good. Is this thing that resistant to magic as well? 160. Oh, okay. I'm using the the wrong spell. Okay, that makes sense. It's sort of accidental that I left my like lots of cerulean flash set up, but I feel like it's gonna work for this fight. Cool. If you're wondering, this is a setup where Terra Magica wouldn't work. Come on, fa oh, no! I... That's annoying. Makes sense though. So what, what happens is, what the deal is, you, you can't cancel out of your um, animation for... Like when you have no MP for a spell. Again, makes sense, but that kind of screwed me there. Has screwed me before. Now, that's more like it. Gonna deal no damage? Yep. You know how it is. They really like gimped. And critical attacks against a lot of these bosses. They barely do any damage. Hmm. I, I, I was close there. <clears throat> I was very close. Uh, I cannot believe. Annoying. Annoying, because I would have had that. Okay, I'm sniping it. Uh, Torrent has been uh, one shot by this asshole via that attack. Oh, fucking hell! I hate this boss. This thing, when he does that stupid jumping move, it is unbelievably annoying. Unbelievably annoying. <sighs> it's. Well, I mean. 
if you guys don't know, I think I've mentioned this before. This is this guy is based off of a cut Dark Souls 3 enemy slash boss. Which is based on the Puss of Man. And you guys know, you've watched my Dark Souls 3 playthroughs, that the Puss of Man is my la least favorite enemy in the entire game of Dark Souls 3. Uh, and a boss based on that put into Elden Ring is just chef's kiss. Uh, yeah. I, I hate this fucking thing. That it... It just flails. I hate enemies where... Like, it's okay to have a chaotic enemy, but this this thing just like... Flops around the battlefield and then... Brushes up against you and takes 85% of your HP. I mean, that's like most of Elden Ring. Uh, though, or quite a lot of Elden Ring. Is this worth it, what I'm doing? Uh, probably not. It's not gonna drop like jack shit, is it? I have a feeling it won't. Like, look at that attack. And then he fucking... He like flops around like crazy. Covering... All the distance you could ask. It one-shots Torrent. And then you're just screwed. And that's the attack that has killed me in all of these attempts. Um, so what I'm probably going to do is I'll grab my uh, runes and get the hell out of dodge because... Honestly, this is sort of the last enemy I wanted to deal with. I thought I was going to be able to like demolish it with magic, but it's actually quite resistant and has a lot of HP. Uh, so, I don't know, man. Okay, I'm actually close. Uh, I'm, I was stubborn and I did another attempt. So, we're gonna see if this works. I mean, it won't take long for it to one-shot me. A la like that. Okay, as long as that misses, we're okay. Is it dead? Did I hit it in the mouth? I think I did. Man, that was annoying. Uh, what's the soul bounty? 18k. Uh, 18k. I think, although, is this the tier we want? I think this might be it. But then I take all of it back. Yes. This is the one. Alright, then we kind of do need it to do this. Ignore what I said, uh, but man, yeah, this thing again an Elden Ring boss based on my least favorite Dark Souls 3 enemy is quite something. Again, this just goes back to the what I mentioned in the review as well that I touched on quite a bit is that this game, like. This, I mean, Souls games in general, the camera has a real tough time dealing with a lot of these bigger enemies. Like, the lock-on point for this thing is the middle of its stomach, and it's like a long snake thing. So, when it's up in your face, and you're locked onto it, 80% of the actual enemy is out of your view, because the camera is fixated in the middle of its chest. It's just a weird one. That was that was quite an endurance run, I can honestly say that. Again, we have the Falling Star Beast as well, we can mess with that as well. But I think for now what I'm gonna do is we'll wrap up this episode of Elden Ring right here. Elden Ring Sorcerer Run, I should say. Thank you guys very much for watching, hope you enjoyed this episode. As always, if you did, make sure to give this video a like, comment, subscribe, turn on post notifications, and I will catch all of you in the next one. Peace out and goodbye.